We're in Mesilat Yesharim, chapter 21. And here he says the great antidote to make a person more spiritual, spiritually focused, and um, is Amnam, you have it, right? The greatest, most powerful vitamin is not vitamin C, vitamin B, which is bitachon, trust in Hashem. You just have to throw your burden on Hashem. Oh, I need this muster myself. You got to put your destiny in the hands of God. And Hashem never fails to satisfy. If you authentically, with all your heart, pure, with purity of heart, not fake, but purity, just. And he says, And you should know. You always have to know, a lot of times, you know, one of the biggest problems in our community and causes Lashon Hara and animosity is, oh, this guy opened up a rival business, he's a lawyer, he's a, right? You have to know. The Gemara and Yuma says, if, 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 if money is destined to come to you, the whole world cannot stop that. Hmm. By hook or by crook, you're going to get it. If Hashem wants you to get something, <laughs> nobody, not the most powerful person in the world, the President of the United States or whoever, can come in the way between you and what's, you know? And it says, It says, like, between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they say this guy needs to make 100K a year. So, nobody can um, stop and impede God's flow of blessing. So, therefore, you have to be relaxed. It's a guarantee from Hashem. You know? The Chen Amru and the Gemara in Yuma, the famous Gemara, this is actually my famous Gemara, Gemara. The context over there was the people had secret sauce. They knew the secret sauce, how to make the Ketoret and the Lechem Apanim. And over there it says, En Adam Nogea, Bemuchan Lechavero. A person cannot sabotage and take away what is destined for his friends. A Filu Kemalanim, even a hair strand. You understand? Even the smallest iota, you cannot. Take away from the destiny. He says, technically speaking, even if you are passive, you should have get what you got. But unfortunately, there's a global curse that God said, with the sweat of your brow, you need to work. So therefore, we have to do hishtadlut, right? You know, you know that. Like in Farsi, we say, as to harikat, as chuda barikat. Which means, technically speaking, before Adam corrupted the world and destroyed it through his Eve, Adam and Chava through their sin, really, okay, Hashem said, this guy needs this much parnasa, and he doesn't even need to do hishtadlut. But since the, post the curse, Asher al Adam Chayav Lishtadel Ezul Lesorak Parnasa. You do have to do some, um, you know, movements. You have to be proactive to make your money, because that is the international and global gezera. You understand? She can gezara melech alion. Bareze kemas haporeya kol min hanushi asher in the malad mim. You know, this is just like a global decree that nobody can get away from it. I mean, you know that, that there's the Ramban that says that. If you're on a very, very high level like Yosef HaSadiq, then you perhaps um, that's a discussion for another time. But globally and generally speaking, you do have to put effort in to get the blessing. Which means you have to put the key and then you'll get the blessing. But if you're totally passive, then no, it doesn't work that way. Al Ken Amru. That's why it says in the Midrash Tehilim, you could say even if the guy's totally passive and lazy, which means Hashem will give blessing and what was destined for you to get once you move off your tochis and go proactively work. 
אך לא השתדלות הוא המועל, אלא השתדלות מוכרח. It's not like that your work, you put in the extra hours is going to make you have the money. It's just a prerequisite, you understand? It's not a result of one another. It's just because of the curse of Adam, you have to put in the time. And that, that's why you shouldn't put over... Again, my Rosh Hashim will give a whole thing on this. If we're talking about Hasidut, the Hasid's number one goal is to always go above and beyond his duty to his Creator. And to be super meticulous, like laser sharp, careful in all his commandments, whether or not to hurt people, whether to learn the... Pr- not waste a second of time and um, but uh, the, the the issue over here is is that if Hashem is giving you Parnassah right if you trust that Hashem is giving it to you what Hashem wants you to work on Shabbat even if you don't work on Shabbat Hashem wants you to work 80 hours a week if Hashem is giving it Hashem there's no mitzvah to go in overtime right and overdo it if Hashem is giving it to you, Hashem wants you to you he's gonna give it to you in the most kosher way. You have to mm-hmm. right? It's like what the Rosh Hashiva of Nehru Shal said regarding college. Okay, college is also top of Ishtadlut, but it's like the bathroom. It doesn't mean you need to stay there the whole day. <laughs> so you need to So that's what it's saying. It's saying that you you once you once you became proactive, then you were Yoitze. You don't need to overdo it. And this is uh, the thing that shocked me regarding so many of my... Co- I mean, we were, in, we were in Santa Monica all those years. Mm-hmm. I wasn't so much in the Pico community, but, you know, a lot of people... It's a big test to, you know, put... to become, you know, workaholic and put the extra hours. That's the antithesis to be talking. Because if Hashem's giving it, Hashem's gonna... You don't have to overdo it, right? You only have to do normal. Even if you get closer to Hashem, you could even do less than normal. Like Rabbi Yaakov Hillel, I have a cousin that does this. He guaranteed if you own your own business, if you, even if you work instead of eight, four hours, he said you're not, you're going to make the same money. And learn, obviously, instead of working eight, you learn four hours. Mm-hmm. And my cousin has been doing it for two years. He actually made more money than when he was working eight hours a day. Wow. If you're self-employed. Self-employed, you know that. It's, a, it's a, also okay. a fact. There was, there's no billionaire... That was ever through a desk job, you know, like a, it's always self employed people that become. Yeah. There's much more blessing in that, right? But uh, even if you're, if you're an employee, you shouldn't just let your uh, employer overwork you. He's not God. So it's always a test, like the Messiah Shashan tells us. It's scary how every corner and every second and every opportunity it's a test that we could you know go the right way or the wrong way that's why we need Musar we need Torah we need a good Rebbe you know mm-hmm. to do the right thing but he says like this he says once you become proactive right and do your Hishtadlut and put in the effort then there's place for Hashem's blessing to start on, you know? You don't have to overwork and overexert yourself and become a workaholic. Like King David says, you don't have to go up Mount Everest after your Parnassa and go to the four corners of the world, be like Trader Joe's, go to Australia, <laughs> right? Hashem will bring you what you what you need, right? So the, the Ramchal is making something clear here. Yes, you need to put an effort to earn your Parnassa, because that's how the global thing is. But the effort doesn't need to be a workaholic type of effort, an extraordinary effort. Even a minimal effort, right? Hashem will support. The King Solomon says, "Don't you shouldn't be over ambitious to become filthy rich, and because you know 
Don't be too, too, too much of a wise guy. And it's unfortunate that more often than not, a lot of these, um, you know, it, it's a much harder test, by the way. The Ramchal said this many times before in the Messiah Yishayim. To be wealthy and ethical and chassid and really fearing of God. Because, right, money a lot of times could corrupt you and make you think you're superior and make you balgaiva and snobby and more focused on your business rather than your Torah and your service of Hashem, right? Oh, wow. Mazel Tov. We're finishing the last parak here. He says the, 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 the main way to serve Hashem is like the earlier generation's the classical and original Hasidim. Osim Toratchan Ikar, Umalatchan Tefela. You're following me, right? Yeah, they make the Torah the main, and they make their work the, only the side dish. Right. So the main thing is my tefillah, that's where I put my sweat, blood, and tears in. My Torah, remembering my Torah, remembering my shas, remembering my... And, okay, the work is something I have to do. But I'm not going to overdo it. It's, it's a side thing. Honestly, the bathroom thing is not such a bad thing. <laughs> it's not such a bad thing. Rabbi Avnon Yitzhak says another way. He says it was a curse. So it doesn't mean you have to overindulge, you know, get... Uh, engrossed in the curse, right? Really, like we said, if Adam hadn't become corrupted through his sin, Hashem would have given whatever he deserved even without, even if he was totally passive, like in the Garden of Eden. Hmm. It's a curse that he has to do, put some sweat and blood into there, but it doesn't mean you need to over -excel. And he says, actually, the original Hasidim, they did it the right way. They made the Torah the main dish and their main endeavor. And aside, on the side, they worked. And they were Baruch Hashem. They were blessed in both ways. You understand? They had a solid... Since they only worked the minimal that they needed. Once you put in the minimal effort, you don't need to worry about anything else in the world because again if you especially if you're a chassid Hashem's going to take care of you Hashem takes care of the goyim and the dogs and the ants and the whales right right you have to have that Hashem sustains all, all living beings all living beings so kal v'chomer ben over the person that's the apple of his eye that's actually obsessed and putting all his number one energy and focus the chassid into serving Hashem. You don't think Hashem is going to take care of him? Of course he is. That's ridiculous. So once you put the minimal effort, you should not uh, worry yourself and suffer from anxiety about the worldly pursuits. Hashem will take care. Now you could put the your pristine focus on um, serving Hashem and becoming the perfect, real deal, not fake, chassid, and to do the, the complete service of Hashem, right? Again, avodah temima, which is really what he says in the beginning, that that's the whole foundation of our relationship with Hashem. To the, not to treat the Torah as a salad bar, but try to do the 613 commandments and fix all our midot, right? So we should be generous, we should be uh, a complete package of godliness, right? Kale, right? like the Yud Gimel Midot that we say right after Ose Shalom. Hashem, Rachum, Bechanun, just like God is merciful and gracious and patient and uh, God is so humble. Right. We, we have to follow in the, the mighty path of our Creator and be complete. And I can guarantee you, if you're a workaholic and that's your obsession and luxury and you're drowned in that, then you're totally oblivious. You don't even care about... It's just not physically possible, especially in our day and age, where there's so many distractions. So Hashem should help us to be the best we could be. We just finished now. Next week, God willing, chapter 22. Amen.